Hello, hello everyone. Do you want to see how I got this transformation from my natural hair to this bob without any leave out? Yes, people are still doing invisible parts. And if you do not want to spend all this money to buy closure and hair, then stay tuned and I will show you how to get this look with no leave out. And also I will give information about this hair, where I got it from, what I thought about it, and how long it lasted for me. So stay tuned. So here's the hair that I'm using. I got this off of Amazon. The cut, this is the bag that it came in. It came with three bundles. And the price was around $44. But it came with an 8 inch, a 10 inch, and a 12 inch. So in this video, I'm just going to be using the 10 and the 12 inch. I'm not going to use the 8 inch. So I left a little of my edges, I didn't braid it real tight around the edges because I was planning on making baby hairs, in which I didn't end up doing. But um, for those of you who still want a little hair out, that's what you can use. Or you can line up 27 piece blonde hair around the edges to create baby hairs. So it'll be blonde instead of black. So I always put on a cap as I'm doing my quick weaves. That way it's easier to remove it when I want to take this off. And I'm cutting, the reason I'm cutting my ears out is that way the cap will lay as flat as possible around my ear and around the front. So this is another product that I always use, which is the Wonder Wrap. And this is great for removing the, the glue off your hair. Usually I don't get glue on my hair if I use this on or paint this on good enough. And how I'm applying this, because I want my real part to show, I'm not going to use this cap for a part. I'm going to end up cutting it out. So what I'm doing is... I'm applying the Grow Protect right at the part of my real hair. So I'm going to leave a space open. That way when I cut the top of this cap in, open where my real part is, it'll already be protected where I need it to be protected. And as you see what I'm talking about, I left a little line. I painted the whole bag. You want to make sure it's fully covered. And the spot that I miss in the part is the spot that I'm going to be cutting out. So once the Grill Protect has dried, I have already went under the dryer. So no, I didn't just cut this off while it's wet. But once it's dry, you want to cut as close to the Grill Protect that you painted on off. That way you don't have any pieces of the cap rolling up. What this does, cutting the edges of the cap off, is stops it from being so tight when it starts growing on your hair. Growing out, especially if a person leaves it on longer than three weeks, as it's growing, it will start to pull onto your real hair. And with this cap being on there, on your head, it will make it tighter, which this is how people's edges come out. So when you cut, cut the strap off, it stops it from pulling so tight. So 
This is the hair glue that I'm using. It's for blonde hair. So the glue is actually white instead of black. And when it dries, it dries clear. And so I've already cut, started cutting some of the front of the hair because this part you want to be really careful. I'm going to show you what I'm doing, but most of this I did in the mirror. And this is so easy to cut your hair on this part. So this is why I'm taking the comb. Most people I've seen do this, they do it just straight with the scissors. But I want to make sure I'm not cutting my real hair. So I'm taking the rat tail and lifting up the cap. And then as I move it, I know that there's no hair under there catching. And then that's when I go and cut it. Now I'm going back in and just painting over with the Grow Protect again. Clo as close as up to the part as possible because this is the area that will be hard to come off if you do not have enough Grow Protect on there. So I'm trying to make sure there is enough. The cap is going to roll a little and when you put the Grow Protect on there, it's going to or help it to stay down. So not only is it helping it to stay down, you're also protecting that all these pieces that you're about to put in is protecting it from getting onto your hair. And as you see, this hair that I'm using is not just 613. It's like a piano 613 mixed with 27. I didn't want all blonde. I kind of wanted the highlight look. So I found hair on Amazon that was 613 and 27. But the bad part about it is you see how much is shedding. As soon as I unrolled it, it just starts shedding like crazy. Like you should see how much hair I had from shedding in my lap. And all I did was open it and pull on it. You see this? Just a little part of pulling it. And you see all the hair that is in my hands. And also... I try to color the hair at the roots brown and when I rinsed it off it completely came off like there was no color at the roots as you can see well actually I didn't do this hair this pack but on the next pack you'll see that there's no brown at the root so I'm going to go back in and spray brown on it I like to measure each piece as I'm going that way I know where to place it and it lays flat when I cut it and do it like this. Okay, now I'm going to speed up the video because this is all I'm pretty much doing. I'm just cutting and laying the tracks. And then I'm going to come up to a U section. And then I'll stop, slow the video back down so you can see the shape that I'm making as I come up with the tracks. So I use two bundles of hair to do this so this is enough where you just only need two unless you like a really full bob
stop at when I'm making the horseshoe shape. I try to close it as small as possible, but now I'm going to measure each piece to make sure that it fits into the space correctly. Before I do this part, I cut the track that I'm going to use in half. So I split the track so it'll be thinner, that when I lay it down, it will lay as flat as possible. Because sometimes if you just put it, glue it on track by track, it'll look really full like a lace wig sometimes that hasn't been plucked good. But when you split the track and then glue it on, it makes it lay super flat. <laughs> pieces I'm drying each row I don't really trust to just laying it on there because when sometimes when you go comb it it goes and slip so I just do it like I normally do just dry each row each piece as I put it on To the end of the part I'm finishing closing up the circle and when you make the circle you want to make it as small as possible maybe about the size of a dime and leave that dime space open to make the or put the hairs in there but I'm going to show you and once I create the circle how I put the hairs in <laughs> as small as I want it and I'm creating a closure like I said I want the closure to look as natural as possible so I probably roll the hair about three times around in a circle and then when I cut it off I cut the top of the track off so all you have is the loose hairs and then you still have to go in and take the loose hairs and pull those out because I don't like all that hair shedding and you don't want it to be when you comb it out all those Small hair starts shedding. All right, here's the easy and fun part. Now to do the closure, all I'm going to do is put some glue in the spot that I want it in. And then I'm going to put dab some glue onto the loose hairs. And then dry it a little, but not all the way. And when you put the hair up there, just hold it right there and let it dry some more. Or you really want this to be completely dry. I know I 
didn't dry it all the way. So it caused me to have to do a second step. But this, once you dry it all the way, you make sure that it's enough hair and that nothing is showing. And I'm tucking the hair up under the tracks. So it will look like it's just coming out of my scalp. But as you see, the glue is still white, so it's not completely dry. And this is why I end up having to do a second layer. But it just made it fuller and more natural anyway. That way, if you don't do this part right, um, if you go back and glue more hair up there, by the time it starts shedding, even though mine didn't shed, but by the time it starts shedding, you won't be losing a lot of hair. You, It will still look full. So, as you, as you see now, I am drying it. And then I'm going to go and do another layer of hair the same way. I'm going to cut the track off the, or cut the hair off the track, do the same step, and then glue the hair up there again. Like I said, the only reason I had to do this a second time is because I wanted fuller and it wasn't dry all the way. So I want to make sure that this doesn't shed later, in which it didn't. But let me give you a quick review of what this hair did. The hair looked nice. It got a lot of compliments. But it felt, I think it's a synthetic blend because when I go in at the end and curl the hair, and you can see by the way it moved in the beginning of the video that it didn't really move. It's like human hair, but it still looked nice. So they advertise this as human hair, and it was, I believe, a synthetic blend. So I like the hair. I do not like that it was a synthetic blend because when I went to go curl it, it would not curl. It would just bump. So I would not be buying this hair again. But like I said, I really like the style. A lot of people like the style. They didn't really know it was synthetic mixed in with it. As you see, like it's really tangling a little. But the overall, I guess if I was to give this a score out of 10... It would probably be seven, and the only reason it's seven is because of it being advertised as human, but it was synthetic blend. So, cutting your own hair with trying to film the video and not being able to use a mirror is, was really hard but this way if you want to bob and you want a simple way of doing it this is the easy way when you can't really see the back of your head put it in the rubber band and maybe two inches depending on how short you want it one two inches away from the rubber band just cut it even just make sure it's a clean cut even so then when you take the rubber band out, all you got to do is just clean it up at the bottom. If you're somebody that doesn't know how to cut. choppy look but the straighter you cut it across was in the ponytail the cleaner it will be when you pull it out the rubber band but I'm just going in I got the pretty much the shape I'm just going in now and cleaning it with the razor the razor for me I mean the clippers the clippers are a lot easier for me to cut with versus scissors
Okay, finally, I'm using the Tresemme spray that my client gave me. It's a brown color, and I'm just going to spray the roots so it'll look more natural. Even though it looks like it's growing out my scalp, this will make it look even more natural since my roots are black. And when my hair grows out, it will blend better versus your parts split. That's the thing about invisible parts. They split open within one or two weeks. So this will make it look more natural. As I said earlier in the video, I tried to color the hair brown and none of, you see none of the color got, and none of it took. So it, this is definitely, definitely can't be human hair because it didn't take any brown to the hair. But don't get me wrong, the hair is still cute, the style is still cute. It did what it needed to do for the time being. So this is pretty much the end. If you like the video, please hit the like so more people can watch these videos. I can put out more videos knowing that there are people who are interested in these things instead of replaying my videos, but do not even subscribe. So please subscribe, like the video, and I will see you in the next video.